Welcome to Jewish Cinematheque, where we meet some of the important faces involved with films that tackle aspects of the Jewish experience. Today I am joined by first-time feature film director Orit Fuchs-Rotem and three-time Ophir-winning actor Dana Ivki. Their Israeli film Cinema Sabaya was chosen as winner of the 2022 Ophir Award Israel's Academy Award for Best Picture, with Rotem also winning as Best Director. Cinema Sabaya is about a group of Arab and Jewish women who attend a video workshop where they're encouraged to, to document aspects of their lives. Rona, played by Ms. Ivgi, is their instructor. The women's stories presented are based on actual sessions conducted by the filmmaker in order to prepare her screenplay. The issues discussed are real, the dialogue and sharing among the women honest, and the attempt to get at elements important to women from both communities quite eye-opening. <laughs> Valer? <laughs> 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 Orit, Dana, welcome to Jewish Cinema Tech. Thank you. Thank you. Orit, how did this idea sort of blossom? Uh, you had made some short films. You're a graduate of the Spiegel Jerusalem Film School, um, and you had, did some television work, but all of a sudden, this idea? Yes, uh, actually from the closest place for my mother, uh, who participated in a group like that uh, as, a, as part of her work. Uh, she's the mayor of Hadera, uh, advisor for women's issues. And she participated just in a group like that with Arab and uh, Jewish women in Givat Chaviva. So, so the the mayor had had this group had created this group. Or she was she one of the creators of the she group? Uh, she's one of the uh, the one that had this idea. But okay. it's Givat Chaviva uh, who did this course, and she just told me about her experience there. And I thought it's a great uh, platform to tell different women's stories and to talk about filmmaking as well because it's a film also about the filmmaking uh, itself. Yuvat Chaviva is known for trying to bridge the gap between... It's a coexistence center, yeah, yeah close to Chadera. And so she, she told you about this idea, and then I understand that you began experimenting yourself with something like this. Can you just tell us how that evolved? Uh, yes, I understood that in order to write um, deep characters and real uh, stories, I need to do a research. And I just uh, decided to make those kind of groups as an, as an instructor myself. And I offered it to Givat Chaviva and also in Accra. And they went along with me and we just, um, yeah, I did some groups. And I wrote. So you uh, yourself led the groups? Yes. 
But Arab? everybody knew that I'm doing research. It okay. wasn't like I'm, I came to, <laughs> to spy. I, everybody knew that I'm doing research. And um, yeah, and uh, there were really interesting women in my groups. And they wrote uh, and, and did it uh, at the same time. How did you find these women? Um, in Accra, I just went on the street and asked women. Just, just to, for the audience, Accra or Acre yeah. is Akko in Israel? Yes. And then I just went to. Uh, you like, went into uh, the streets. I went into the streets. I didn't and then, know that. <laughs> I didn't tell you that. No. And then I went to a tailor that I met on the street, and she told me go somewhere, and there are me women meeting there sometimes, and they just offer it in a, it's a place like a shelter uh, for women, and I did it there. And then in Givat Chaviva, they just. Um, like called for women that wants to participate and, and some women came and we did it for a few months each time and women shot uh, things from their life and brought it to class and uh, what was really interesting was the dynamics that happened between the women um, but I also wrote it based on my experience as in all of my life like women I met uh, my own story um, yeah, and they changed it a lot during uh, the making, even in the casting uh, stage. Did you share with these women that you might be using it? Yes, of for course. A project? Yes. And but they changed all the biographical parts. Nobody feel exposed. Nobody can uh, recognize itself. I mean, the stories are there, but the bi biographical parts uh, are really different. I changed ages and religion and. So nobody can see herself in it. Wow. <laughs> that sounds like you had a lot of fun getting this going. <laughs> a lot of years and a lot of fun. How many years? I worked on this film for eight, for eight years. Wow. Yeah. Donna, so you're playing, you're playing Orit. Yeah. As a version, Rona. A version. <laughs> How did you get involved in this project? You, you have a history. I mean, my, my gosh, your filmography is extensive for such a young person. Many awards along the way, including international awards. Um, how did you get involved in the project? Um, I was, uh, I got the script from Arit and I didn't know her. And I, I read it and it was very special, but I was, I really couldn't know. It was really up to how she's gonna direct it. Because, you know, I was reading just, you know, all these women sitting there and talking and I said okay this could be amazing but it could be like anything it's really a director's film right so uh, we met and I started asking questions and uh, we we had a I think a bonding like, on the spot yeah and and then I started asking listen about the end and what do you think about this and I started like I wanted to know how she's going to approach it and she says oh forget it it's all going to be improvised and I said okay I want to do it <laughs> and so that's how we started working on it, but I think kind of both of us took it as a, we wanted the experience more than we knew what is actually gonna come out in the end, right? Because we just really wanted to, to experience it. Had you ever done this type of film before? No. 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 And how was that for you as an actor? It was perfect for me as an actor because it's, one of my favorite approaches to acting is just being able to be there and listen. And that was the most important thing for Orit. We would all, first of all, react genuinely to what's happening. And the script would be after that. We had, uh, we shot it a bit like a documentary, actually. There were two cameras shooting at the same time and they were very far away. And no camera was um, inside our circle. They were all outside of the circle, so we could really forget that they were even there. I was busy with my own camera, you know, shooting the women, and I, I forgot it was, it was even filmed. So for me as an actress, it's perfect. And I think for all of us, it was like a very special experience. It was, sometimes we had 20 minute, 30 minute long takes. So Rita and the editor really had to do a lot of kind of, a bit of documentary work. Eight women room. with cameras in a circle. Yeah. You there supposedly instructing them. Yeah. And Orit outside that circle with a camera person filming. Yeah. Two Incredible. cameras. Yeah. Two, Two cameras. cameras. Yeah. That's why wow. we, we worked a lot together before filming 
because we didn't rehearse at all. We went over the script, but with, with all the actresses, but me and Orit, we rehearsed for uh, four months, and we talked a lot, and so I could really be her mouth inside that situation. And because she didn't want to interrupt takes, and she, didn't, she always wanted to see what will happen. Orit, I can only imagine you have, what, Palestinian, Israeli Arabs, and Israeli Jews together talking about how they feel about their lives, about the situation, about politics. And you are the Israeli in the room, the Israeli Jew in the room. Yes. Did any of them, you know, take it out on you at any point? Of course. <laughs> I mean, everybody was really afraid from how they will uh, come out. I mean, they all felt like uh, the representative of all the people that follows, I mean, that calls themselves Palestinian or, or Israeli Arab. Each one of them calls herself differently. Uh, so they were really, they had to trust me that I won't do anything that uh, they don't feel they can stand behind it. Like Amal Murkus, the actor of Nasrin, she's a political person and she has a very strong opinion. And, uh, and she, she knows about editing. She knows it can be out of context sometimes. Uh, so she, she was uh, worried, but in the end she trusted me and the process and everybody uh, let go and, and did what we planned to do. And it was a dialogue. I mean, I didn't tell them all the time what to say. Like to Amal Murkus, I didn't feel I can tell her what to say political. Uh, she Jewish, knew, Israeli. She was Jewish or uh, she was? Uh, it's Nasreen, the, the singer. Uh, she's, uh, she's a Palestinian. Uh, and a very well-known singer. Yes. A very well-known singer. And she's also an actor, very talented actor and singer. And um, I, I gave her the, liber the, the freedom to speak and to say what she wanted to say in the situation uh, with Eti that says uh, she'd never met an Arab woman before. Um, so it did. It, it's a, a, in the film, it's like five minutes or so, but in real life, it took like an hour, yeah. this take, uh, with a lot of, uh, yeah, there was a lot of fear also of what's gonna be uh, in the end. But, uh, but in the end, I, I feel she, she feel, um, she feel the results uh, comfortable. She feel comfortable with the results. And what about for her as a politically active person, participating in what really is an Israeli film. It wasn't easy for her. It was a decision that came from her heart because she really loved the script and she loved her character and she felt it gives a, a deep representation for uh, Palestinian women. And I don't think there are enough representation that shows women in this, um, in a deep way. I mean, they're usually in the back usually someone's mother, someone's sister, they don't really have like the spotlight on them. And I thought she thought it's more important to have it this role uh, than not to be in a, an Israeli film. I mean, if she puts it, uh, you know, but, but um, it wasn't a, an easy decision for her. And, and what it, about it was a very other, brave decision for her. And for the other women, Pal uh, the Isra other Israeli um, Arab Palestinian women? They, I mean, there, there is Marlene Bajali uh, who plays a Watef. Uh, for her, it was fine because she she used to to be in the Israeli television, and and in Suad also Joanna Said uh, felt fine with it, and also Asil Farhat. Uh, I think for Amal, it was the deep, the most difficult decision. But still, for I think for it's it's still an issue like what festivals to go to, what represents Israel, what. What, what is Jewish, what is Israeli, what is, it's always, it's an issue throughout the whole Yeah, and, and there was that terrible controversy at, uh, at, at the Cannes Film Festival with uh, Iran Koliran's uh, uh, film, uh, Let It Be Morning, where some of the Palestinians, some of the Israeli Arab actors did not want to participate yeah. publicly. Because I, they couldn't come as themselves. They couldn't say, we represent ourselves as Palestinians. And I can understand that. Um, it's a, it's a dilemma for uh, actress, for artists in Israel, um, and it's getting worse, you know. 
So one of the key questions is, you are an Israeli director making films that touch on some of the Palestinian issues. Um, so do you, do you have the right to do that? Do Palestinians see you sort of usurping, taking over their territory? Um, it depends how you do it. I, I'm not from the... I don't believe you can tell only your story. I think you can tell everybody's story if you do it in the right way. And I used uh, them as partners, not as a... Uh, they didn't have to say anything they wouldn't want to say or doesn't feel comfortable to say. Um, I just used them as partners and they felt they have the... Um, the opportunity to express themselves in the way they feel comfortable, and uh, so uh, so I believe it like it also an ob ob oh, an obligation ob ob obligation yeah for uh, for me to to share stories like that. I mean, I don't think I just need to tell my uh, the, ra the 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 stories of people in my radius. Anyway. Also, it's happening in Israel, right? It's a situ it's situation that's happening. It's not like. She wants to tell the story that's happening in Gaza or in it's. Uh, You're politically active yourself. We're more mixed than we maybe sometimes <laughs> feel we are. So you've worked with Israeli Arab actors. Mm -hmm. You're politically active yourself, uh, are you not? Uh, I mean, so do you see film as 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 helping, possibly to bring? You know, there, there are some critics out there who say, oh, you know, she's made this film about Arabs and Jews talking to each other. That's fiction. They don't talk to each other, but we have examples of Givat Chaviva and other places. I think that's a really strange, uh, I saw this comment, but I find Terrible. it very weird. Yeah. I wonder if that person knows anything about Israel from her own experience or not, because it's, it's ridiculous to say that there aren't circles like that. We live inside each other's lives and uh, the more we acknowledge it and get to know each other I think that's what we're also saying with that film let's just first have this talk have this conversation even if it's not easy even if it's scary or we hear things we don't like let's just not leave the circle let's just stay there and listen and then we can maybe get to other <laughs> issues but first of all we have to just see each other for a second yeah one of the one of the israelis in the film says she's never met a palestinian or an israeli yeah. arab because she's afraid she always thought they were they were all terrorists so therefore <laughs> uh, yeah, she doesn't really say it but it yeah. comes out that way yeah it comes out yeah. like that way she said that i want to be honest in the bombs attacks in Khadera, i used to uh, but yes, I think we have a long way to do, but uh, there are circles like that, but it's not a majority. I mean, a lot of Israelis, Jews, don't really know Arabs. That's the fact. First of all, don't know how to speak. Don't, don't speak Arabic, uh, don't understand the language. Arabic. So that's the first mm -hmm. problem, maybe. Whereby most, what is it, 98% of Palestinian, of Israeli Arabs speak Hebrew. Uh, yeah. Some re re very high percentage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's talk about the the question that that is certainly on the minds of most american jews uh, how does this new government in israel this new right-wing government uh, affect oh. <laughs> you as a filmmaker and you as an actor in terms of the financing and the various changes that uh, are being talked about in terms of a whole variety of things we well, don't really know yet. Yeah, they're right? still yeah. new, but they have some very, very dangerous steps that they're making. Like, you have to sign loyalty to the country uh, and not to hurt the country's symbols uh, when you want to get grant from some funds. And for me, it's very dark and scary, and will lead to self censorship. Censorship? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, or to the other way, uh, to the other. Uh, to the opposite reaction, that I think a lot of artists uh, want to fight it and maybe will make more political films. I'm not sure they will get, will get funds from the country, but maybe there will be other ways to, to go past it. But you know, uh, today, this morning, just, you know, well, what's happening in Israel just right now. Share with the audience. It's like, I think, the biggest protest that ever was. 
You know, it seems that every weekend uh, and every the, the protests are growing. But today in Jerusalem, there were, I don't know, I last heard th uh, 350,000 people going up to Jerusalem and whoever can't go or having demonstrations in Tel Aviv. I know that there are some and all over the country. There's a big and strike. It's, it's really, it's scary in a way that makes people act. So maybe it's not lost. And this film, did you see it as a vehicle for acting? I realize you, you shot this before COVID, back in 2019. Yes. But still, it's coming out now. It's coming out the same time that uh, uh, Iran, Kohl Iran's uh, film, Let It Be Morning, is being released in the United States. Yeah. Uh, um, it's not planned. I think he finished much earlier, but uh, uh, it's an act, I think it's a political act to show deep uh, characters of women even. It doesn't have to be uh, Palestinians or Jew Jewish women, but for me every film is a political act in a way. Um, it serves different uh, ca causes, but uh, I wanted to show, uh, like the film only has uh, women characters in it. They just speak and tell about their life. And I thought it's a political thing to do because I didn't see enough uh, um, characters that I could identify and I wanted my daughter to see uh, in the Israeli cinema. There is, of course, but a lot of it is from a men perspective and it's not uh, what I had in mind. I wanted to, say, to, to do something different about it. So you have eight women. And they're not talking necessarily about politics or no, about the terrorism. Talking. They're talking about women's issues. And their dreams and their, uh, yeah, just themselves and their ordinary daily life. And how have women reacted to the film in Israel seeing it? Mm. I think men and women, uh, they really um, identified with uh, the, the reactions are really emotional. Yeah. People really react emotional to the film. Uh, people cry, people laugh. Um, Watch it again, a lot of people. like when Relationships, sexuality. Yeah. I mean, you get into so many important issues. You're right, for not just women, but for women and men. But yeah. these are important yeah. issues that also often men don't get ask raised. a lot what would it be like if it would be a circle of men? Or they're, why didn't you uh, <laughs> put more men in? Or, I mean, I think they're watching it and discovering. A world that maybe, like Orit said, it wasn't really seen in cinema before, and the, and it's interesting to them. What would have happened if it would be like just men sitting? Maybe the it would be a different film. I think for sure. Yeah. Do you find, as women artists, that women are in Israel today more and more accepted? as directors, as quality actors, are women actors making the same? I mean, you are one of the top actors today in Israel. Are you making the same salary as, uh, as a male actor? Um, not making. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I never checked how much my colleagues are making, but I think, uh, it's a process because personally, I can say personally that I don't feel it in my life. I don't feel oppressed in my day-to-day -day life. But I see how different it is, like even a few kilometers from where I live, how different it can be and how lucky I am to have my life. And, uh, and it's like a whole different, even, you know, my neighbors could, could have a different world. Like it's very, Sometimes you feel, oh, it's getting better, and then you run into stories, and you're like, no way. It can't be happening, like, in 2023. This is not possible. So there's a, still a lot of, of work to do, but there are also, like, uh, places where there's, a, like, hope, like this film, I think, and that's why it's very important for us that as many people as possible will watch it, men, women. And, and Orit, you do show women from all different places. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, not just, you know, Israeli Arabs and Israeli Jews, but 
Yeah, I wanted it to be really uh, a variety, like uh, for different ages, different backgrounds, social, social uh, back backgrounds. And that's why I used the city hall, because there are so many differences uh, between the women there. Some of them uh, can be really successful and uh, educated, and some of them can be, um, you, you know, the cleaning woman or uh, someone that never studied in her life. So uh, it was important for me to, sh to show this variety. You say City Hall, you shot the film at City Hall in Chadera? No, uh, it's supposed to be like the, the center of Givat Chaviva, but it doesn't say in the film where it is. Uh -huh. But all, all of them are employees of a uh, yeah, It's City like initiated Hall. by the... But the, the, what's incredible from a cinematic point of view is that most of the film is shot in that one room. Right. Yeah. And I understand uh, that that's the same room where Shimon Peres got married. Oh, wow, how, how do, do you know that? that? <laughs> well, we, do, we do our homework. Yes. So, is, yes, right? It's in Ben Shemin, yeah, uh -huh. it's a boarding so, school. Crazy. And, but how, how did you, you shot the film in sequence. You're on the outside. It's a circle, which is a nightmare for filmmaking. Yes. Hmm. How did you go about it? Well, we used two cameras. Well, uh, but two cameras, uh, you know, but you shot it in sequence and, and you didn't do a lot of retakes? Yeah, we shot it in a chronological order, so it was easier. Uh, but it was, uh, yeah, it, it was an adventure. I mean, I didn't know if it will work. Uh, but I had also the, the faith that the videos that shows the outside will give some air into this circle. But uh, in the end, I just trusted the, the women that I choose to be in the film and my partners and Dana. So I just felt we were doing something special and, and we felt it on set. So we knew that we're, something, is, something strong is happening. You chose actors who had some acting experience, most of them, not all. Not all. And, and how did that go in terms of, you know, it's not as if they were Dana Ivki working with you. Yeah, so Dana Ivgi and Amal Murkus are the most famous. Uh, there's Ruti Landa, which is also uh, uh, known in Israel, and uh, Marlene Bajali, to who uh, yeah. that some people really remember her from. She was a past actor. And Yulia. And Yulia Tagil, she tried in Gesher. But all of them, it's like uh, mostly first or second experience uh, in cinema. And uh, we have Liora Levy, who plays Carmela, the ones that live in, in the yacht, which I just met her and put her inside the film after. She had never acted. She before. never acted, she's, she, but it was her dream. And it's really her yacht film. It's yeah. really yeah. her yeah. yacht. So yeah. Uh, yeah. just for the audience, without giving away too much, because we want everyone to watch the film, yes. tell us about her, because she's quite unique in this film. She's very unique. I met her through my script advisor, uh, which is kayaking and just met her in the sea. And she told her that it's her dream to, to act in a film. And, and she, she told, lives on this boat. She lives on this boat and she works, as a, she works with computers and uh, also write a blog, a sea woman. She's really, she follows her dreams. Uh, she is single with no kids, like in the film. Uh, it's really similar to what she is actually. She just plays herself in a way. Quite a story. Yeah. Really. And she's very talented. I hope she'll get more parts. Yeah. Let me ask the two of you. You've now made this groundbreaking film. It won the Ophir Award. It was Israel's nomination for the Oscars. Where do you go from here? Orit, what, what, yeah, what projects do you have uh, or that you feel comfortable sharing? Uh, well, I'm starting to write a feature film, and also I'm working on a TV series uh, with women from the Gul Hasidic. Wow. Uh, yeah, that talks about sexuality. It's talking, it's about um, bride's instructure. Uh, that's, uh, a yoet set uh, kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. like she, she tells them how sexuality happens in mm -hmm. Gul. And they work with partners that are really from Gur. They, they are not religious anymore, but they were. And uh, we write together, working on it. So this last film you shot with a documentary style. Um, is that your plan for this new film? I think it will be based on real women that, will, that left the religion and will act their life and their uh, uh, experience. experience. 
um, but I still don't know. I think, I mean, I preferred it because it gives a lot of freedom to the acting, that you don't have to be like really accurate in the shot. And uh, uh, I mean, I want to give more room for the acting and the natural feeling than uh, for the vis visibility. And do you think the fact that there are now so many TV series in Israel that deal with aspects of the Haredi community. Yeah, it's a it's a problem. I know. Also, my producer says uh, it's, it will be difficult to sell, but we are focusing on the sexual sexuality and the women. So I don't think it's a it's a serious about uh, Hasidut Gul. Like it's a serious about women, and they're, uh, the the small details that you don't know, and it's a crazy world. To, it's to it's so exciting that you're doing this work. I, you know, I think of what Sarah Poli has been doing in North America in terms of women talking. It's nice to hear women talking, and that's what Cinema Sabaya is. Yes, it's Sarah Poli is an inspiration for me. And it's really. just that we need sometimes not, not to close, uh, to listen to what they have to say. Yeah. Donna, you're off to Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. You're going to be there with this film. Yes. And a second film. Yes. And a third film. <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. They, they accidentally uh, have a retrospective for me. <laughs> but I, I think they didn't know I was in those three films. I wrote to them and That's just to let them know that I'm coming. And they're like, oh, <laughs> amazing, you're in three films. And, yeah. and, and plans for yourself? Any, any projects that you're involved with or films that you've been signed to, to act in? Well, uh, that you're prepared to share. I can't, <laughs> but but yeah, I mean there'll be there'll be things. But um, well, we look forward to both of you. Thank, thank, thank you, you very so much. much for the two of you for coming and joining us and sharing this incredible film. The film is called Cinema Sabaya. Uh, it's women talking to each other, but it's also the audience needing to listen to what they have to say. Uh, thank you so much for thank making you. this incredible film and for joining us today. Thank you.